Christ, the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. You are transfigured upon the mount of Christ our God, revealing your glory to your disciples as much as they were able to bear. So that when they saw you crucified, they did know it voluntarily and they proclaimed to the ends of the earth that you are the light of the Father. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy,
revealed and content with a faithful dwelling in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, mercy. For seasons of weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, mercy. For travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick, the suffering, for the captives and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O oh God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady, say to us, let us commend ourselves and each other in all of our life unto Christ our God. Look down on us and on this holy house with pity, O Master, and impart the riches of thy mercy and thy compassion to us and to those who pray with us. Run to the art of all glory, honor and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Yeah. 
grand glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Within you, 
whom you have received from God, and that you are not your own. For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your <coughs> spirit, which are God's. Peace be unto you, reader. And to your spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. The Super Bowl in this country has come and gone, and one of the aspects of football that is taught by coaches to receivers and running backs is what's called the stiff arm maneuver. And a stiff arm in football is meant to keep an opposing player at a distance uh, so that they can't get at one's legs or one's body so that they cannot be tackled or wouldn't be tackled. That is taught as a technique, uh, one that is used very effectively by those that are good running backs and good receivers even those that are smaller than those that are trying to tackle them. And so the stiff arm keeps players at a distance, a technique that is taught. In today's gospel lesson, the story is about, yes, the forgiveness of the Father, but how we are meant to be like our Father in this forgiveness. And forgiveness, as portrayed in the parable of the prodigal son, is very intimate, it's very close, it's very personal. It's not at arm's length. The older son would have kept the son, the younger son, at arm's length. But through the parable, our Lord teaches us that forgiveness, as difficult as it may be sometimes, as hard as it may be for the, per for the person to allow forgiveness to enter their heart, is something that's very close and very personal and very, very intimate. I have to remember that the parable was told at a time when sinners were being received by Jesus and sitting at his table. And the Pharisees and the scribes were complaining, were murmuring, as the scriptures say, murmuring against Jesus. Look, he receives even sinners, and he sits and he eats with them. Look, this man receives sinners. That's the stiff arm, that's the arm's length, that we would often simply continue to practice, right? So these are the Pharisees and scribes of the day, those that served in the temple, those that copied the law and were doctors of the law and lawyers of the law. They served him on a daily basis, and yet they couldn't allow forgiveness somehow. To break through their hardness of heart, Jesus makes the forgiveness of the Father, very questionable, very personal, and simply unavoidable. How? By telling a parable about a family. About a family. A family, a father, and two sons. Three characters. Very simple. In order to break through that distance and that hardness of heart, he tells a story about a family. And who's not going to root, cheer, hope for family. No one. Somehow our Lord, and in this way, makes forgiveness simply unavoidable. Impossible not to be confronted by it. Not impossible to not allow it in one's heart, but simply impossible not to be confronted by it. Who's not going to cheer for a father and two sons? And we know the story. The younger one leaves. He simply leaves. And the father eventually sees him coming back, skipping over. But here's the point about that. How is it possible, and what does it mean that the father saw him while a long way off? What does that mean? Yes, of course, it's the image of the father waiting for our return. Absolutely. What was that father doing? He was looking out his window. He was opening up his curtain on a daily basis, looking out of his house constantly for his son. Why? Because his family wasn't whole anymore when his son left, his younger son left. It wasn't whole. 
something was wrong, and he looked out repeatedly for his son. And finally, his hope was fulfilled. There his son was, and he could not contain himself, and he runs to his younger son. Something was very wrong from the day that that younger son left. It was very wrong with that family. It wasn't whole, and the father's heart was simply broken. Broken in a way that no older son could fix, though he was very attentive to his father and kept his commands and commandments. And he says as much, <laughs> pointing it out to his father towards the end of the parable. But something right, something wasn't right with that family. Everything was wrong because that younger son was gone. The family wasn't whole anymore. How could anyone find fault with a father, this father, who ran to his younger son? How could they say this father shouldn't have done that? Everybody roots for a family. It was the softening, it was the breakthrough, the softening of the heart, hopefully, that Jesus was looking for in the Pharisees and scribes of his day. Those that said, this man eats with sinners and receives them. Jesus makes forgiveness very personal. It is very personal. It's very intimate. That's why it hurts a lot of times. It hurts. It's difficult. It's difficult to pass through that. It's not an ambiguous he eats with sinners and receives them. That's the older son at the end of the parable. How so? In what way? Where's the stiff arm there? Where's that arm's length? What does he say? When this son of yours, arm's length, not my brother, not my, my, my family, when this son of yours, how often do we simply do that in our own hearts? We keep people far away, far, even our own families. How difficult is it to allow that arm to come in and simply embrace in one's heart someone whom we have something against, perhaps? Maybe not even someone that we have something against, but somebody we want to have something against. Forgiveness through this parable is shown to be very intimate. It's a matter of the heart. It's unavoidable. It confronts us on a daily basis. Our Lord so beautifully illustrates it for us. And as we approach the Lenten season, God willing, we remember the forgiveness of the Father that we're meant to imitate, our Heavenly Father. It's a close one. It's a near one. It's one that our Lord would not any, let anyone, he would not let anyone keep forgiveness or keep anyone who was in need of it at arm's length. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. <laughs>
we pray for the blessed and ever memorable holy orthodox patriarchs and for the blessed and ever memorable founders of the holy house and this monastery and for all our fathers and brethren the orthodox who part of this life before us especially the archpriest Paul, the archpriest John, Deacon David, Matushka Mildred, Ronald, Jessica, Aspasia, Frida, Shirley, James, George, Walter, James, Catherine, Elizabeth, Tamara, Sergei, Philip, Howard, and Anna, who here in all the world lie asleep in the Lord. Health, salvation, and visitation for the servants of God, especially Archimandrite Athanasi, the Archpriest John, the Archpriest John, the Archpriest Stephen, the Archpriest Joseph, the Proto Presbyter Thomas, Julius, Nicholas, Joanna, Jim, June, Karen, Peggy, Marge, Harry, Constantina, Anna, Gus, Jacob, Alia, Sharon, Catherine. The child Celine, Rachel, John, Andrew, Linda, Maureen, the nun, Katerina, Vadim, Alexis, Kristen, and her child, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Again, and oftentimes we fall down before thee, O God, who lovest mankind, that looking down 
upon our petition, thou hast cleansed our souls and bodies from all defilement of flesh and spirit, and grant us to stand blameless and without condemnation before thy holy altar. Grant also to those who pray with us, O God, growth and life and faith and spiritual understanding. Grant them to worship thee blamelessly with fear and love, and to partake without condemnation of thy holy mysteries, and to be accounted worthy of thy heavenly kingdom. Let guarded always by thy might, we may ascribe glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
heavenly kingdom, his beatitude, our metropolitan teacon. And his evidence, our Archbishop Nathaniel. May the Lord God remember his heavenly kingdom, the venerable priest of the diaconate in Christ, all the monks, nuns, and clerics of the church. May the Lord God remember his heavenly kingdom, the honorable government of our country, its armed forces, and civil authorities. May the Lord God remember his heavenly kingdom, all those for whom we pray, and all those we hold in our hearts. May the Lord God remember in his heavenly kingdom, all of our mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, children, and kinfolk departed this life before us in the hope of the resurrection. May the Lord God remember in his heavenly kingdom, the ever-memorable founders, benefactors, and builders of this holy house and this monastery. <coughs> and may the Lord God remember in his heavenly kingdom, all you Orthodox Christians, always, now, and ever, and forever. Who for us demanded for our salvation, 
came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became man. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried. And on the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, in one holy happy and apostolic church, I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us stand and rise, let us stand with fear, let us attend, that we may offer the holy oblation in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you.
across the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting at the right hand, and the second and glorious coming, thine own of thine own, we offer unto thee on behalf of all and for all. Sanctify, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Let our 
of God who loves mankind, receiving them upon his holy, heavenly, and ideal altar as a sweet spiritual fragrance, will send down upon us and return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Lord, have Pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Things that are good and profitable for our souls and the peace of the world, <laughs> let us ask of the Lord. <laughs> that we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. <laughs> a Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, and peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask of the Lord. <laughs> For the unity of faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and each other and all of our life unto Christ our God. Amen. Unto thee we commend our whole life and our hopeful Master who loves mankind. We ask thee and pray thee and supplicate thee, make us worthy to partake of the heavenly and awesome mysteries of this sacred and spiritual table with a pure conscience. For the remission of sins, for forgiveness of transgression, for the communion of the Holy Spirit, for the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, for boldness towards thee, but not for judgment or condemnation. And to make us worthy, O Master, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call up upon thee, the heavenly God, as Father, and to say, Let us 
In the fear of God, with 
faint with love draw near. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. God is the Lord, and as we build himself, we will look at the table of Jesus Christ on the mission of his sin, and his life.
February is not an easy month to find the supply, supply priest. So we thank you and the foods and our greetings to your family and your parish. Uh, our gratitude. Um, we have coffee hour today as usual. Everyone's welcome to stay. There are blessed candles here on the table that you may take home with you. They were blessed on Monday at the feast day of the meeting of the Lord. Take them home and burn them for your, for your spiritual benefit when someone is sick and so on or on the feast days.